October 1866, 36th Semi-Annual Conference. The Semi-Annual Conference convened in the Bowery in this city on Saturday morning, October 6, 1866, President Brigham Young presiding. On the stand during the meetings were Presidents Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, and Daniel H. Wells, the First Presidency, Orson Hyde, John Taylor, Wilford Woodruff, George A. Smith, Amasa M. Lyman, Ezra T. Benson, Lorenzo Snow, Erastus Snow, and George Q. Cannon of the Twelve Apostles, John Smith, Patriarch, Joseph Young, Sr., Levi W. Hancock, Albert P. Rockwood, Horace S. Eldridge, and John Van Cott of the Presidency of the Seventies, John Young, Edwin D. Woolley, and Samuel W. Richards of the Presidency of the High Priest Quorum, Daniel Spencer, and George B. Wallace of the Presidency of this Stake of Zion, Edward Hunter, Leonard W. Hardy, and Jesse C. Little, the Presidency of the Bishopric, Peter Mon, Presiding Bishop of Cache County, Lauren Farr, President, and C. W. West, Presiding Bishop of Weber County, George D. Watt and Edward L. Sloan, Reporters, with other elders and bishops from various parts of the territory. In front of the stand were the Tabernacle Choir, led by Elder Robert Sands, the Ogden Choir, led by Elder William Pugh, and the Logan Choir, led by Elder William Knowles. The conference was called to order by President Brigham Young. The Tabernacle Choir sang, The Morning Breaks, or Elder Orson Hyde prayed, singing, Go Ye Messengers of Glory by the Tabernacle Choir. President B. Young expressed himself that his desires and prayers were, and are, that the elders of Israel and all the saints may have the Spirit of God to such an extent that they may never be deceived. And he asked, Would it not be well for the elders, in speaking, to bear testimony of the work of the Lord? He bore testimony to its growth and the growth of the saints in the principles of eternal life, and inquired if any had failed to increase in faith and in receiving the revelations of God, who had hindered them from so doing, or taught them anything that would prevent them from receiving any blessing they could desire in righteousness. President H. C. Kimball spoke in testimony concerning the establishment of the kingdom of God, quoting the words of Jesus, The kingdom of God is within you and showing that those who have rendered obedience to the truth and have the Spirit of the Lord with them, and the principles of the kingdom in their hearts, are the recipients of the blessings expressed in those words. He bore testimony to the saints as a people, having increased in righteousness, faith, and good works. President D. H. Wells reasoned upon the promise made by the Lord to his elders, that if they would go forth without person's scrip and bear his gospel to the nations, they should be fed and clothed and have means put into their hands, and pointed to the realization of, the, of that promise by all who had gone forth in faith. Also the promise made through the elders that those who would obey the gospel should receive a testimony of its truth, a promise which no impostor could make with the most remote prospect of its being fulfilled. Yet it has been proven true by thousands, and thousands today can bear testimony to its truth. He exhorted the saints to diligence and faithfulness in the performance of the duties which are required at their hands, and referred to the rich blessings which we enjoy, blessings of the heaven and the earth, enjoining the necessity of taking care of the grain which the earth has abundantly brought forth this season, and of every blessing, temporal or spiritual, and urged prayerfulness and humanity before the Lord, that the saints might be preserved from evil. Singing by the Choir, Prayer by Elder George Q. Cannon 2 p.m. Singing by the Ogden Choir, Prayer by Elder John Taylor an original piece composed by Elder H. W. Nisbet for the occasion was sung by Elder George Teasdale, chorused by the Tabernacle Choir. Elder Orson Hyde addressed the congregation in a very instructive manner, quoting the words of Jesus to the Nephites, Then shall the work commence with the Father among all nations, etc., showing by figure and illustration that the work of the Lord for the accomplishment of his purposes had commenced among the nations, and that they are being prepared for desolations and great mercy and great misery if they will not receive the truth, as the saints of God are being prepared for unnumbered blessings if they continue faithful. He bore a strong testimony to Joseph Smith being a prophet of God, and to Brigham Young being the man appointed and accepted of the Lord to lead his church since the death of the prophet Joseph. Singing by the Logan Choir Elder John Taylor treated on the order of the organization of the Church of Jesus Christ, showing that the churches of modern Christendom are wrong in doctrine and organization according to the Bible on which, as a revelation from God, they professedly are based. He referred to his early studies of the scriptures and to his being satisfied that the Church of Christ, as organized in the days of Jesus and his immediate disciples, had in it apostles, prophets, 
helps, gifts, and blessings, which were to continue while the church was recognized and owned by God. These he could not find in the churches of the world, but when he found them with the power of God as received through Joseph Smith, he had revealed the message brought with gladness. The Lord had confirmed to him, as to thousands of others, the truth of the words spoken by his servant. He showed that the preaching of the gospel, the authority of the priesthood, and bearing the testimony of the truth in power to the nations, had gathered all who had come together to keep the commandments of God. Speaking of testimonies, he said, God has spoken, the heavens have been opened, and who of the saints do, does not know it? He has spoken from the heavens, he is our God, we are his people and we know it, and no power can stay the onward progress of his work. Singing by the Ogden Choir, Prayer by Bishop P. H. Young Sunday, 7th, 10 a.m. The vast bowery was crowded to excess, with an interested and attentive congregation, while crowds were compelled to go away, being unable to get within hearing distance of the speakers. Singing by the Tabernacle Choir, Elder Lorenzo Snow prayed. Logan Choir sung, Sweet is Thy Work. Elder Wilford Woodruff occupied the stand and spoke by way of testimony in a most interesting manner, referring to the way in which the Lord had worked upon him when a young man, before he had heard of the gospel, preparing him to receive it, and of the manner in which God had worked upon President B. Young and many other elders for the same purpose. He also spoke of the efforts of the adversary to destroy those noble spirits who had received the truth at an early day of the church, and of the evil spirits coming to them in numbers at various times and places with this object, bearing testimony of having been so attacked in London, when in company with Elder George A. Smith, and of three angels appearing to him who relieved him from the power and presence of the wicked spirits. This testimony, he said, he had never borne publicly before, and the spirit which accompanied it declared its truth to the immense congregation to whom it was for the first time given. During his remarks he related many interesting incidents of the protecting care which the Lord had exercised over his servants. Elder John D. T. McAllister sang, I live for those who love me. Elder Erastus Snow followed, speaking of the gospel, being brought to him when a boy in the state of Vermont, and of the power of God which rested upon him, sealing upon his heart the truth of the testimony borne to him by Elder O. Pratt, who first preached the truth to him. From that time until the present, he had been engaged in bearing testimony of the gospel to this and other nations, seeking out the honest in heart. He narrated part of his personal history connected with the church and some of the persecutions he had endured with his brethren for the truth's sake, and testified that it was and is the power of God and not of man which has ever sustained his servants and controlled the destinies of his work. In bearing testimony to the work of God, he pointed out the effects of the gospel upon those who receive it, and referred to the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, the simplicities of the doctrines contained in it, and the blessings which are received by those who believe in and accept it as a revelation from God. Singing by the Ogden Choir, Prayer by Elder George D. Watt, 2 p.m. The congregation was larger and denser, if possible, than in the morning. Singing by the Tabernacle Choir, Prayer by Elder W. W. Phelps, Singing by the Ogden Choir, Sacrament administered by Bishop Hunter and Assisting Brethren. President B. Young spoke of the unanimity of, of feeling enjoined by all who receive the gospel, and their desires to make known its truths to all the children of men. Mankind can never find out God by any other than the Lord's own appointed way. He referred to his first hearing the gospel and to the correctness with which the plan laid before him by illiterate men corresponded with the plan laid down in the New Testament, and spoke of the overwhelming testimony by which the work of God was sustained in this age, even in an early day after the organization of the church. The systems of religion taught among men do not teach mankind, nor have they power to advance them in the knowledge of God. The gospel is the only true philosophy in the heavens or in the earth, and when it is preached to all nations as a witness, then will come the end of the reign of wickedness on the earth. He reviewed the settlement of this country by the Latter-day Saints, the difficulties which had to be encountered and contended with, the kind manner in which strangers were treated when passing through in the early days of the country's being settled, and the perfect security to life and virtue, the freedom from assault and insult, which then characterized this city and all the settlements in the territory. The civilization, now sought to be introduced into this community, is trying to change this, and endeavoring to destroy peace, virtue, order, sobriety, and everything wholesome and good. He asked the people, as a whole, 
the Latter-day Saints, and those that are not Latter-day Saints, who are friends to wholesome laws and good order, to express themselves whether they would permit gambling houses, grog shops, and places that lead to and produce such kinds of iniquity. The vast concourse of people present declared by uplifted hand that they would not permit gambling, houses of ill fame, nor grog shops to exist in their midst. An opposite vote was called, but failed to receive the response of a single uplifted hand. The President continued, showing the evils of gambling, drinking, and other kindred vices. There are but a few of those who have come among this community, entertaining views different to the people here, that follow these vices, encourage them, or seek to aid those engaged in them, and all good citizens, irrespective of creed or faith, will aid in their suppression, that the welfare, peace, and good order of the community may be promoted. He alluded to the family of Joseph Smith the Prophet and to the kindly feelings which have been entertained towards them by the authorities of the Church and the Saints, and called up portions of the history of the Prophet Joseph which proved how far that family have gone astray, as will all who follow after them in their present course. He then stated that he would hold conference until he felt it was right to dismiss it. The Tabernacle Choir sang an anthem. President H. C. Kimball spoke a few minutes corroborating the remarks of President Young with regard to the family of the Prophet Joseph and closed the meeting with prayer. Six and a half p.m. A meeting of the priesthood was held in the tabernacle, the building being crowded. Addresses were delivered by Bishop Hunter, Elder John Taylor, and Elder George Q. Cannon instructing the brethren on many items connected with their duties. Eighth, 10 a.m. Singing by the tabernacle choir. Prayer by Elder Joseph F. Smith. Ogden choir sang. Elder George A. Smith addressed the congregation, calling up many points in the history of the latter days of the life of Joseph the prophet, the troubles he had to contend with produced by false brethren and from other causes, his receiving the revelation on plurality of wives, the last conversation Brother George A. had with him on the subject, in which he showed the salvation, glory, and exaltation that it would produce, and referring to many other interesting points and incidents. President B. Young followed, also recalling incidents and facts in the history of the Prophet Joseph, with regard to the authority conferred upon the Twelve to build up the kingdom, and that to them were given all the keys and power for that purpose. Elder George A. Smith made a few further remarks, bearing testimony to the remarks of President Young. Singing by the Logan Choir, Prayer by President D. H. Wells. Monday, 8th, 2 p.m., the Ogden Choir sang an anthem, Prayer by Bishop David Evans, Anthem by Tabernacle Choir. Elder Edward L. Sloan presented the authorities of the Church who were unanimously sustained by the vote of the conference in the following order. Brigham Young, President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Heber C. Kimball, his first, and Daniel H. Wells, his second counselor. Orson Hyde, President of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And Orson Pratt, Sr., John Taylor, Wilford Woodruff, George A. Smith, Amasa M. Lyman, Ezra T. Benson, Charles C. Rich, Lorenzo Snow, Erastus Snow, Franklin D. Richards, and George Q. Cannon, members of said quorum. John Smith, Patriarch of the Church. Daniel Spencer, President of this stake of Zion, and George B. Wallace and Joseph W. Young, his counselors. William Eddington, John T. Kane, John L. Blythe, Howard O. Spencer, Claudius V. Spencer, John Squires, William H. Folsom, Emmanuel M. Murphy, Thomas E. Jeremy, George W. Thatcher, Joseph F. Smith, Peter Nebaker, members of the High Council. John Young, President of the High Priest Quorum. Edwin D. Woolley and Samuel W. Richards, his counselors. Joseph Young, President of the First Seven Presidents of the Seventies. And Levi W. Hancock, Henry Harriman, Albert P. Rockwood, Horace S. Eldridge, Jacob Gates, and John Van Cott, members of the First Seven Presidents of the Seventies. Edward Hunter, Presiding Bishop. Leonard W. Hardy and Jesse C. Little, his counselors. Samuel G. Ladd, President of the Priest Quorum, William Carmichael and Robert Rice, his counselors, Adam Spears, President of the Teachers Quorum, Henry I. Doramus and Martin Lency, his counselors, James Leach, President of the Deacons Quorum, Warren Hardy, his counselor, Brigham Young, Trustee and Trust for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Daniel H. Wells, Superintendent of Public Works, John Sharp, his assistant, William H. Folsom, Architect for the Church, Brigham Young, President of the Perpetual Emigration Fund to Gather the Poor, Heber C. Kimball, Daniel H. Wells, and Edward Hunter, his assistants and agents for said fund, George A. Smith, historian and general church recorder, and Wilford Woodruff, his assistant. 
President Joseph Young spoke in a fatherly manner on the importance of embodying in our lives the principles of the gospel and having the Spirit of God with us, so as to be prepared for every change and every emergency. He alluded to the labors of the early settlers and to the fact that all the grain, fruits, and other products of the earth that are produced in this territory are the results of the labors of the Mormons, and asked why men should want to cut down the fruit trees, destroy our cities, and exterminate the very people by whose labors they obtain bread to eat. He spoke of the first visit of the prophet Joseph, bore testimony to the truth, and blessed all who desire to do right, inculcating charity and kindness upon all men, and urging the elders, especially the seventies over whom he presides, to be temperate in all things and sober. Elder Charles C. Goodman sang a song. Elder Levi W. Hancock bore his testimony to the work of God and to his confidence in the constituted authorities of the church. The Ogden Choir sang. Elder John D. T. McAllister, Henry C. Fowler, and, Ad and Samuel L. Adams sang several songs. The Tabernacle Choir finished with an anthem. President John Young expressed his strong faith in the work of God and said if any person wanted to find out those who were recognized of the Lord with power to build up his kingdom, they could find them in the men who were hunted by the agents of the adversary and hated with the most intense bitterness for the truth's sake. This was the case with Joseph and Hiram and others of the priesthood who have gone behind the veil while they were in the flesh, and it has been the case with Brother Brigham, Brother Heber, Brother Daniel, and those who stand by them all the time, and with all the saints of God. He testified that the work of God would continue forever and continually increase. Blessed the people in the name of Jesus by virtue of his patriarchal priesthood, and dismissed the congregation, adjourning the conference until the 6th of April, 1867 at 10 a.m. Edward L. Sloan, Clerk of Conference.